Hi, yeah, so today we're going to learn uh, about more about Workday technology and specifically Workday Prism Analytics and possibly do some good. Um, so the CEO of my hypothetical company, Global Modern Services, has declared that we're going to be carbon neutral um, by um, 2020. And then Greta said this. We're not telling you to offset your emissions by just paying someone else to plant trees in places like Africa while at the same time forests like the Amazon are being slaughtered at an infinitely higher rate. Yeah, so I mean, her message is clearly that we need to get to a, a carbon um, zero situation. And so that means reducing the carbon spend that we have, um, or that we the carbon that we're generating now. So. What I thought we'd do um, is that we would make coal managers in our organization accountable for their controllable CO2 as far as travel is concerned. So we're going to build the following solution, right? So thank God I worked day. Um, so I have from my expense lines, yeah, I have in travel and from that travel I have from two. So I'm going to extract that uh, from work day um, into Prism Analytics, yeah. Then I have a file that tells me for every, you know, this from to uh, travel, um, how much CO2 has been generated by that. I'm going to bring that into Prism as well. Join the two together over here and, and uh, the data set derived data set, I'm going to join the two together. So now that I have expense report line, so which is basically the flight for the worker from two plus CO2. Right? Then I'm going to sum that up by, um, by month now so that I have um, the, let me just see what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to see a value per, per month right there. And also do a, a, a year to date calculation. Uh, so that I understand because I'm going to tell them. Um, it, here comes other details. So here I have the expense report lines, right? Plus the CO2 here. I sum them up by month and do a year to date calculation. And here I do a, um, a, a annual calculation of CO2. What, uh, what's the annual spend CO2 in the whole theory behind all of this is to say, hey, we can look what tra we traveled last year, add up the CO2 that we generated last year, that's the cap for this year, maybe reduce it by 10% and that's going to form the budget right there. So I do that with this data set. Then I pull the data for all my workers um, out of Workday. Um, so very supervisory organization for all the workers that were there at the end of the month now, from trainer worker, our friend for analytics. Um, so add those lines are there to every line for every worker and add their CO2 spend, right? So what did they spend for month there, for the month and for the year to date, yeah? And then I'm gonna unit to that uh, budget from the budget that I have from last year. On top of that, I put a PDS, a published data source, um, uh, that I publish up, that creates a data set um, on which I can write a workday report. Show you my, my budget in actual for my team. Uh, how much did I spend? How am I doing year to date? Uh, and then I'm have a drill back uh, into actually the detail, right? So they can have a look at, um, you know, who generated that. All right, so there's quite a bit of stuff going here. First of all, what you've seen, I've got a diagram, right? I mean, I have a plan of all action. So please guys, when you build use cases for your prism stuff, don't start just building because it's, it is that easy to build stuff. Um, actually got to be admitted. The first time I, I, I prototyped this and I didn't do much of a diagram, <laughs> but it didn't work out that well. So here, Please, I do have a diagram that you're going to build against. Um, a couple of things that you've seen me doing, right? Um, I'm saying where's my source of data here? I'm doing ingestion, right? Um, this is a bit of name conventions over here. BDSs are stuff that pulled out on the person. The DDSs are derived data source things that change stuff, right? Um, and the last one is the PDSs. We call them published data sources. Those are the ones that we publish and that we, that we use to write reports on. All right, let's go ahead and start doing that. So the first thing I've got this a report that I'm going to use for the expense report lines, and the view custom report. Ugh, that's wrong. View custom report, and drop the diary in there. And um, just want to point out a couple of things on this report. Um, for you to be able to pull data from a worker report into Prism Analytics, you have to. Um, enable that report for Prism, yeah, and it has to be web service enabled. The other thing is you can't have any prompts, yeah, so your prompts have to be all filtered right. Um, and so this one has a data source filter for company, and so up at the top. Anyway, this is expense report lines. The data I have over here is supervised your organization, date, the expense report line, the item, then uh, 
you know, origination, right, uh, and destination. Now, what you'll see here I'll put the text values as well, right? These are calculated fields for the reporter. The point is, when you ingest this into Prism, it comes along with the work that ID is not very useful for doing any joins and everything. So that's why I needed the text values of this problem too. So this is just a concatenate text or concatenate uh, report calculated field. Yeah. So uh, very simple when that comes up. Dot dot dot. So here we exactly it's a concatenate text field, and I'm just using you know the origin. Alrighty, uh, and so we have ROM2 and I have the worker, right? So that's basically all. I, I just did a couple of filters here. I'm just doing for flights and all. I don't want any empties, right? Um, hey, look, this is a sample data. Anyway, so let's go build our first um, uh, data source. Um, and so in the data catalog. And so it comes up with the data catalog over here. Uh, and um, you obviously see some of the stuff I've been prototyping. And here we have the data catalog. For all of this to work, right, you put a lot of domains over, over here. So domain um, prism, you need access to these domains, right? Prism by this is great, manage and manage and publish. So those are the domains that you need access to you know, um, to be able to you know, do this work that I'm doing over here. And there's a lot more detail on work day and on the work they're learning. Course, yeah. And so here I'm going to go ahead and create. I am doing uh, from custom report. This is what I'm going to ingest. Yeah. So, um, so I can drop my report name here, and it comes up here, right? I uh, say so, okay. I run it now, right? So I run it now. Um, absolute test not right now. I'm asking for a data in. At the end, I will show you guys how you uh, will be scheduling this because you know this is now when you're building it. Uh, when you're scheduling, you'll have to run it in the future, of course. Name, name, name. Uh, I'm going to just do it in replace modes because I'm just doing a full load. In the future, I can schedule and do a pen and a pen and a pen as the months go along. And off you go, save, done. Okay. So this now kicks off a load job, yeah? You see the load job or anything I'm doing right click, view a new tab. And I can go onto the data set and view its integration details. And the integration details will then show me any jobs that are running against that. I think yeah. this takes a little longer. Let's work the way it's. No, you're not that long. All right, here we go. Um, yeah, so we can see it's run here. We have the data over here. So you can see which fields I've got in over here. When I click over here, table view, I have the, the data lines over here. Cool thing is you click on it and it shows you your value that you're getting, the top 10 values, right? So that's pretty cool stuff around Prism Analytics. You can actually see the data that you're getting in your workflow. Um, with view integration details, I would have seen the integration details. That's the report that's been run. And here is the, the actual one of the 10 seconds. So basically I have that data, that RDS, yeah. So now I'm gonna do another thing is I'm gonna put a DDS on top. We call these wrappers, yeah. These are just basically data sets that we use to isolate the ingestion from the data flow. We find that things change over here, right? Um, and for you to protect the data flow against things changing over here, you put this wrapper DDS over there. And um, it's a very simple, creative, uh, it's a derived data set. And it's gonna be based on here. And it just does a couple of simple stuff. Um, it really only is pretty much going to be one to one. Okay, press select. All right, and so we just call it um, uh, BDS based data sets. So I know that it uh, loads in. And then here with the description, right? So remember, this is this is going to be like the reference ID for it. You can't change it thereafter. Um, descriptions are very useful because there you can have stuff like it. So for example, here I've got my description here. Uh, come on, uh, exactly. And I can just copy that in, and that gives me a nice description. Now when I click through my data stuff, I can always see it. Right? Anyway, so up we go. Let's set up. And save, save, save. 
it basically said, now you've created one data set, and now that it obviously takes all the data in from the prior data sets with all this metadata and everything, so it's pretty it's identical. So here you can go with edit. Yeah. And to do, uh, this is where we you know, edit the data set. We're not going to do anything like We're going to add one stage right here it's called manage fields. Yeah. And that's a that's the stage that we now use to, to control um, the, the names and the types of data that are being sent on over here. And I just want to check one thing, supervise your organization at time of thing. That needs to be supervise your organization. So here's organization. So supervisory org. Supervisory organization, supervisory organization. So I've made it of, of object type supervisory organization. Uh, a couple of other things that we do usually here, maybe all things that are like numbers, yeah, decimals, we change them to double, right? Because you don't want that floating decimal point. So just some pointers over there, but pretty much this is all what you do, said and done, right? So today, so now we are done this first two levels. I'm going to go back to the catalog. And so what we're going to do next is bring in my from two CO2. Now I have that in a, um, in a file, right? And so, so I'll create it from a file, upload it from a file, and I have it on my, somewhere, my document, not my desktop, uh, from two CO2, here we go. And so here we have it. So, da, 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 so is that be from the first word names? It is not comma delimited format. I am using, I believe I'm using tab. To change my glove, no, I'm not using tab. Maybe I'm using a space. And now I'm fiddling around. Not either. So yeah. You know, you learn by your mistakes, but let me just figure this thing out. So yeah, the delimiter's right in front of me. It's, 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 it's colon, right? And you guys saw that as well as building around here. Um, so here I've got next. Um, so yes, here I have from to, here's my from to calculation, there's my CO2 line, by the way. This is really hard to get this CO2 value. There's a couple of websites that will do it for you, right? Um, so what I did is use atmosphere. Um, de and then I just did the from two and I just took the average CO2. Um, but do have a look, it's a fair amount of CO2 um, for a flight. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so I have that database, I go next. Um, and so now I can do that over here. PDS from two CO2. And I say that. All right, so now that just simply loads that uh, into Prism. And I have my from two. And as you guys know, I'm in here, I see my data. All right, so those are these two sets. Um, put a nice wrapper around it, call it this name as well. This is obviously just for a typography. Nice, clean development work. Um, so I'm going to go to the father. So go back to my catalog uh, and then create drive on a set from this line. And so yes, so here I'm just starting to use codes, right? So just a DDSO2. Again, our my experience is you, you start building these things and you, you write and you hear what it's supposed to do and you change the nature of it and then you start, right? Just keep on using these like reference IDs works way better and then um, possibly just use a description for it, right? So this data set contains, you know, um, so this data set contains the average CO2 for a form to flight. Right. That's all it does. So. All right, so we're off into those two things. Here's an error, error exists, um, information two. And obviously make sure my diagram is updated, version two. Okay, 
So now what I need to do uh, over here, as I said, um, I'm just going to join to my expense lines, expense flight lines, now the value of that CO2. So I need to create this data set here. And I will go and do that right away. Dun, dun. Create, it's derived, right? I need to use that, um, this one, DS 2.0, CO2 2.1. And did I not create that? Uh, BDS from to CO2. Cancel up. Yeah, I did not. So I first need to do that for. Uh, just give me a second. Uh, yeah, so what I did was when I had a look here is this is the RDS that I built. I was just wondering where it might be. I, might, I, I expected my DDSs, yeah. And I do view lineage, you know, and so I realized of course the RDS, that's the report data source. This is the base data source. It should, so that should, and the name should be like this. This should be the BDS and then it should be the DDS there. So, hey, you know, just redo. You learn from your mistakes and you guys learn more from my mistakes and stuff I do right. So, BDS, uh, I can just trash that, delete, and delete this, and start new, right? And I will save you the start new. All right, so we have our 2.1 over here, and so let's just get back to what we are trying to do. We're now gonna build this DDS that's gonna take our expense report lines and add to the CO2 value of that flight. And so we do it like this, create uh, a derived data set. We start from CO2 2.1, right? And it's gonna dial it up. It's gonna allow us to save it. And we do give it the name that we've used. Now the naming convention, I just continue doing, I kind of have lines of data and they, you know, that's, that's the one, 1.2, um, 1.2.1 as it flows along. So. Save that over here. And now I need to um, edit this here. So to bring the, uh, to do the join. So I go into edit mode. This is where I start modeling my stuff. So here I am going to do um, a couple of things. I need to add a stage here. Correct. And so add stage, uh, it's a join. Pipeline I'm going to pick from is this one now. Right? One point two. So I uh, this when I have my CO two value for my lines and go to the pipelines. <clears throat> Add another pipeline. Uh, just drop that in there. Version two. Select. And so here, so for my primary pipeline. Uh, so here's the match condition, and I will do that on. Um, you need to do it on. From two, right? Um, and you join to because you got the from two here, and you need to join it to the from two from here, right? So when you're from two condition, right, you have one unique value. So that's not quite so. I still need to do that, right? So I don't have the from two here. Right? And so you guys are learning. I'm going to do a concatenate here. So here's my function library concatenate. Uh, um, here I can see the, the syntax, right? So it's concat and it's commas in between there, right? Got it. And I need to do the from to so concat here. Yeah. And then I use square brackets um, and I use the from commas square brackets to add my text values, right? Remember that. And here I can give its name as from to from two, yeah. and um, you see it's automatically done as text. Yeah. So here, yeah, as you can, you can create a lot of, we call this prism calculated fields, yeah. um, and you, you have the entire function library here yeah, uh, that you can do a lot of things with. Date conversions, etc. Right, so now I should be in a better position to do my join. So now I'll go back and do my join. Uh, I don't know, 
line and uh, what was that? It is here to be two, right? Nah, that's correct. And now my joint condition. So for my here primary pipeline, I have a from two, and here I have from two as well. And so I'm going to pass all data that exists in my primary pi pipeline, right? So the data from my primary pipeline is going, just going to go through. So I want this stuff here first. And um, from my secondary, uh, I only really want the CO2 value over here. Okay. And that just to make sure everything's all set up right. You know? So here, um, what you're seeing over here is not the full set of data. It's just a sample, right? This one thing just to get used to it. Um, and I'm going to, here's my from two, right? And it looks like that. That's the calculated field that I have there. And then from two here is very, very similar, right? Yeah, it's just commas. I didn't put spaces in, in between. All right. And so here's my join result of all and the expense report line for the flight plus CO2 at the end, right? Now I haven't joined everything, right? I have not, I've just created a sample, right? So I've got nodes here. Um, and, and it's also, it's also sampling. Um, I hope to get a better file of the from two plus CO2 values, or just you know the values in different flights. Yeah, I didn't do all of these flights. All right, so that's done, and now I do save. All righty. And so I have here. Um, so I have my CO2 value now for every flight. Now, as I said, I'm going to sum this up by supervisory organization. Um, so values per employee per month, uh, so sum it up by and a year to date CO2. So I know because uh, I'm gonna join it to the month in snapshots from trended workers, so I need the value per month yeah, from here. And I will go off and do that. So I need to create this dot set. So create drive data set. And must modify Yeah, so it took a little while for the DDS to come up over here. And so I just had to do a refresh. But now I have that. And I have my name, 1.3. So obviously you guys are seeing that you need your diagram, right? Uh, to be able to navigate this. Uh -huh. mm. That's the name I had not copied. One point three. One point three. All right, so it's created it. Now go edit. And I add another stage here, right? Now I want to join this. So I need to do a group sum now yeah, um, by month. Yeah. So now I need a single value for all the month, right? So I have dates here, yeah, um, but they're obviously all over the place, right? So I need to add a calculated field over here uh, that does a um, trunk. Trunk. Kate, and that essentially will take my date time uh, to a certain date. So um, I'm at a trunk here, and my date time here is expense report line date, and it's comma, and I'm going to do it month. So basically, that gives me the first ever month yeah. there. First day of month. So you'll see this now, and so now I can obviously I can sum up by month using this as a you know the first day of the month. So you see everything has gone to the first day of the month. Yeah. All right. So now I can have my stage, do my sum, and now I am going to do a group by. And the fields that I'm going to do it, I'm going to group it by. Um, I need to supervise your organization for sure. I need for that worker. I need the worker. 
And I'm obviously going to do it by that date here. First day of the month. And I am doing a sum of the CO2 value. So now per supervisor organization for the worker for the month, indicated by the first day of the month, I have the CO2 value. So done. And I can save this, right? Uh, and an additional one I need uh, for my uh, my solution, I need the year to date value, year to date CO2 by worker, uh, um, because I'm going to compare that to my yearly budget. And so, here are year to date, I have a fancy calculator field, which is of type the window function. So, window function, uh, and it does a sum. And so I somewhat, I do this CO2, right? Uh, sum of CO2. I partition my data. So my data set is supervisory. My supervisory. Okay, that's that. Uh, and for that worker, you know, the worker. So it's going to create a, um, a chunk or a partition of. For my worker, for my supervisor organization, that's the data set it's going to select. Then it's going to order that by that first day of the month. You know? Day of the month. Um, order by ascending. And then it's going to add up rows unbounded proceeding. So add up every all the rows before. Okay, so that's going to be my year to date value. That's year to date CO2. Whereas that's the monthly CO2. All right, so I've got that. And I can say this. All right, so now I have per worker, per supervisory organization, their CO2 spend um, and their year to date CO2 spend. Now I need to compare that to the total CO2 spend from the prior year for that supervisory organization. And so now I need to go build that data set. And so that's going to base, be based on this one and do a group sum for the year, right? So now, thank you, this one's got it for me. So create derived data set on 1.3. Let's do a check this 1.3. And it's going to be called this guy. Select. And 1.3.1. And now I'm going to sum this up by year. And did you get the year? Um, I need the year. I, I need the year field, right, to be able to sum up by year. And so what I am going to use is my famous date stuff, and I'm going to extract the year. Right? So extract from that first day of month, um, I don't get the syntax right, what is that extract? And it is what from where, okay, so what, um, and I need the year. Year from first day of month, yeah. And so I do this for year. And it should work. It didn't work. You are not found, oh yeah, right. Brackets, my squares are not right. Uh, that one. Yeah. It always gives you both. Anyway, so there we go. And set it up. And I'll let you go away. Thank you. Now I'm going to do the sum. And so I'm going to do by, and I'll do by supervisor organization. Now I'm not going to lose the work over there. Um, and I'm going to do it by the year for a supervisor organization for the year. I'm going to add up, add up, no, I'm going to sum that CO2 value. Uh, not the year to date, yeah, I just add up all the CO2. Okay. 
Yeah, it's got the sun sun. Uh, it's not very really nice. Uh, you'd be kind of tempted to put a stage in here, manage field stage, and to change the name. It's not worth it. Um, you, you don't want, you don't, these are like wells in the data flow, right? And when you change something in bubble below, then this is going to mess things up. So you just leave it like that and you fix it up later on. All right, and so this would give you now the sum sum. It will, will give you the CO2 from the year. Now, the thing is, the CO2 of this year is to be applied to the uh, is the budget of the CO2 of the next year. And so we need another field here to have that next year. And so it's going to be called here next year. And it's simply a plus uh, at a year to a year, so year plus one, and there's your next year. All right, save. All right, so now we are done all with this. Now we need to build this one, and this is really where I get my data from training worker. And I to that data from training worker, and I'm going to add all my stuff. Right, I'm going to add my, you know, my year to date values. And at the monthly values, the year-to-date values, and the budget. And so we have a report here. And now, so this one is on trend of work out. And uh, I'm going to build this base data set on that trend of work out report. Um, of, I want to have a look at the report. And new custom report. Okay. Some small ones. Uh, and again, it's on Trend of Workers. Uh, as you guys know, it, uh, it's for Prism, it's web service enabled, it's got no prompts. Um, and I'm just going to pull a bunch of these through for the snapshots. And so I do it from Customer Report and the report to Trend of Workers. Say yes, say yes. And now, get my right text. I have to read it. Uh, I have to replace mode. And done. Okay, and so uh, this is still probably running. And so you need to have this is why it takes a little longer. I think you eventually dial up because it's still running the integration that's doing the dot. And then once it's done, it will be ready to show it. All right, and so yeah, so here you have work and the record date. Uh, and the supervisor organization now. So that for every supervisor organization at the end of every month, I have to work correctly. And that's cool. Um, and so I'm going to go back to my catalog. And as you know, I'm going to go to the bubble So I will put my wrapper around that. Uh, it's on this one. And I'm putting my wrap around that. And there we go. Edit. As you guys know, we do an edit there. And add the managed fields. I don't generally need this over here. Now, this supervises your organization has come up with a horrible name. So I'm just going to take that and take that out. And then here on the instance, I'm just going to check if it's supervised your organization. That's good. All right. And then save it. And so now we've got this all the way over here. And now we can scoot all the way over here to this where a lot of the work is going to be done. We're approaching the end. And now, 
I need this one and I don't need to do the I said I need to do the catalog. catalog. And there is that. The creative drive data set on that wrapper. And I do have a copy 2.1. Okay, and so now I'm going to start doing a bit of work here. So first of all, I need to add to for every worker um, for that month end date uh, the tier two the work, work you use in the month. Now remember, we uh, trunked the data for our, from our flights file is from the beginning of the month. This is all end of month, so we still need to just add that. So I need to do my trunk again. Plus trunk eight. Trunk. And uh, field the record date. Uh, date. Comma and trunk it to the month. In the first day of the month. Okay, so I have my joint. And now I can start doing my join of my data and join pipeline. Another pipeline. One that I'm going to join to is this one. First. And I can join this here for every worker. Worker for that month end date, yeah. First day of the month. First day of the month. Um, I'm bringing all of this through. And I will bring the CO2 and year to date CO2. And so here you can little clean up a little bit of the names, right? So CO2 um, the month. Uh, CO2 year to date. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to join to this over here. I am going to join the CO2 from the year, right? And that gives me the budget. And so I need to have a join condition for the year again. And so I'm just going to get the year out of this thing as well. And so I add a field in here. I uh, want extract. Extract, extract. Extract what from where and then I'll extract the year uh, from the date, the record date, the month and snapshot date. And uh, this year, yes. Okay. And then to every record I'm going to add now. The budget. I have that budget in. This is my budget for annual values from Friday. That's where I need the annual values click. And so it's going to be joined to every supervisor organization. The supervisor organization. Time of submission, it gets an error and of that's what I lined them up. So this is where it says that this supervisor, this is supervisory and that's the other that's organization. And so they're not linking up here. Um, 
pretty sure I had cleaned that up. So the way that it should have been cleaned up was I go to the catalog, same on this data set here. Uh, here. Okay, so zero two one. Remember, we had to manage fields here. Fix that up to be a supervised organization. Ah, right. When I redid it, I didn't do it. So here, I did my managed fields. Remember that. And here, supervise your organization. I told you this in supervision. Supervise your organization select time. So now I'm back here. Um, I would definitely need to cancel that. View the data. No, but continue. So that's so far so good. Okay, I think when I pull it in again, I should. Now see that uh, and select the pipeline and So I'm in, I'm here, I'm joining that project. Um, and so, And so you guys knew I was going down the wrong path there, right? So I've already joined that. Here. So it's just like in movies, right? <laughs> the audience knows more than the characters. All right, so here we go. Um, now I'm doing a join, and I am going to join that to the annual values. I was wondering why I didn't got the error before, but that's because I haven't used that as a join condition. And I can add that here now. Plus, I'm just trying to the worker. Super or super organization. Now, don't get the error. And I, for that year, right, I'm going to do add the data next year. Right? Then, essentially, it joins it. For the current year, it joins the data from the prior year. And so now, primary pipeline data that I can bring through here. Just so you guys know, we can, you can bring data from the primary pipeline, you can bring data from the when you join to it, or if it's if it's in both, or from either, right? So there's your options to join data. Okay, and so now I just I need I need worker. I'm just gonna bring all this point through, and I am going to do the sum sum. Right, that's CO two budget. This is really CO two budget. Okay, done. Okay, so. Okay, so now I'm almost done with all my stuff. And so now we are going to create a, what we to call them published data sets, yeah. And they're just a basic, it's a derived data set that we published, yeah. And uh, we try to keep them separate because 
from the logic here because on top of this you're going to write a report now you might find it even you can change this method here if you if you written a report on this data set you can't change it anymore really you know? um, and so you create a pds on which you write reports so at a later stage you can spot this now and so that's why we architect things this way and uh, it's all done And so I create a derived data set on that, and I make it look some fancy and put a PDS on there. Okay. And uh, we do go here with edit. The other thing we can do over here is add, we, at the very end, we add another managed fields here, find the semantic layer. And so we can clean things up here. So record date, I'll make it nice. Supervised organization. First name we might don't really need it. It's year two for the month, year to date, and budget. I need it. I certainly don't need that. So done. All right. So now I can save that. Now a couple other things that uh, I'm going to go to your data set over here. I'll be for transparency and not put any uh, security on here, right? So the security of what data the people, when people access reports written on here, then for the system to figure out what data they have access to, to look at the security that you place on this data set that you publish, right? Um, and since this, I mean, I could trust throw it into the domain for trended workers. So everyone who does trended workers. Workers, data, a securing entity over here, right? We supervise your organization. So we've got that supervise your organization. So I can make it a securing entity. And so now, whenever anyone have access to this data set, this, the rows that you can that that user can see is going to be based on the rows that they can see from their work their security for supervised organization. They can then see all the fields. Yeah, you can um, apply domains to every field as well if you want to. Um, we just have to do for this thing. Yeah. Um, right, I would have taken this out, you know, but just to show you that you can see how you secure the data that you publish. And then, you know, I'll see a couple of things, or you should have blah, 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 and all that stuff. And I secure the seven minutes. Done. All right, and so now you hit the publish button. Yeah. And this is not going to kick off the job, right? That publishes. This data set. Let's see here in progress bar here. And so now that the, uh, the, the published job is finished, what you see over here is you have a present data source, right? So this is a data source on which you're not going to start writing reports in uh, with work to report writer. And so you go here, I'm just going to now create my report. Customer report create. And the name for that report, I just had to hit plus this name. And what I'm doing is going to be a matrix report on the analytics, of course. This optimized performance, all field on your index anyway. So it means really nothing. And so what I will be showing as um, by date here. Yeah. And this is this for my pen. And uh, it's going to be alpha ascending. Um, I am going to sum up. The year to date CO2 yeah. that the person used. So every month I have my year to date, and now I'm going to display it against the budget, right? But now you know the budget. I need to use a max um, value over here because every line of data has the, the budget, you know? Um, and so I can't sum it up, right? It, it needs to be the total. 
uh, it needs to be a max value, right? So that's just the way it shows over here. Now I'm gonna do a couple of more things over here. I'm gonna use this as a trend target line. So if I just know it as a, like it's a target. Um, yeah, I mean, I hope you guys understand what this is about. Remember, against every line of data for every work there, for every work there, worker, I added the CF2 budget for their all on Friday. Right? So if I do a sum, it's gonna add it all up. I need a single value, so just throw a max. Now filter, of course, we're gonna have this field. Supervised organization. And it's going to be in some much less. Uh, it's going to be valued from another field for each properly prompt this. And that's a prompt soup or and subordinates. Go on, want. And I'll use for the dates, yeah. So that record date, it's going to be a, how we're going to run this for a year, greater than or equal to um, value from another field on start date. Date. And record date. I hope all of this works. We'll know very soon. Less than. Again, I made a mistake. You guys can learn more than you find so far. Value from another field from end date. So you guys hope it's not going to work. And there's a whole seems reasonable there. Message prompts up and down. Now the output, I have the chart and table. Fair enough. Actually, yeah, actually I mean, the chart makes sense. I'm going to have it as a bar um, column. Yeah. The horizontal axis is going to be the day, the legend is going to be the metric. Metrics to include is that metric, top end value. Going to come up with this. How I many like the clocks? That really doesn't make sense. Um, here, just like one target line, and then multiple target lines for each group. Right? Um, yep, that's getting the target lines. Uh, and there are workload options, no advanced options. I don't want to show a chart like this because then it's going to add up the stuff. It's not really set up now. Obviously, I need to show it for people and all. There it is. Ah, boo. All right, need to drill down. Worker, this is sweetboard, and probably the date makes sense. Date and then I'll just have CO2. Are we at the year to date CO2? Does that make sense? All right, here goes. Okay, I know that off in terms of operations. So obviously, um, what you'd also put over here is top supervisor organization managed by current worker, of course. So that you know when the worker runs it, they get it automatically. Um, then um, yeah, let's just do a 101 20 17, I believe. Yeah, 20. I think I have data here. 12, 31. 2017. Let's see. Ooh, nothing at all. That's 
So yeah, whenever you don't have a daughter, um, it's probably a join that doesn't work. So currently I'm on that DDS that joins the CO2 value to the flights. And so here I have the flight and have a from two. So remember I just did a concatenate. So it says San Francisco, California, United States to Mexico, and there's nothing there. Now my CO2 file, San Francisco, United States, space, Mexico City. And so we actually have to put a space in there for the joint result to uh, for you to get a joint. I think here is the calculated field we created. Yep. And so I am just gonna do a space. And there, and then she then put a space in there. Okay, Let's save that. Now I forget the join. Let's edit that. I should start getting results soon. Right now, I'm going to see what you're Perfect. To cancel. It is saved, and now we can go ahead and publish the PDS. So here's this PDS, and we're going to go publish that, and then run the report. Publish, submit. I don't believe it took very long. 19 seconds. Okay. So now I do have um, the, the result of this report, right? So here's your target lines and here are the actuals. But they just way, way too high um, from what I know the data is. And so I had a look at what that calculation is, this partition, right? So remember that this is the, the year to date calculation. I partitioned by supervisor organization workers. That's taking up that supervisor organization for the worker for all um, the years, you know? And that was not the correct thing, right? It should do it by, by year, do a year to date total, um, as opposed to this is not year to date, this is ever to date. And so I need to do this by, by the year, right? So um, here's the first day of the month. Some, so I first of all need a calculation here. I need to add a field for year. Um, year. So now I've got multiple years. And then it's the extract. Uh, extract and it is here on the thing it says here and then it's from the field first day of the month so now I'll do my year calculation and then I can do uh, the year to date total instead of forever to date total so this and then becomes the year. Oh, close bracket. Okay, so let's give it another publish. So now by adding year um, to here, um, it's basically throwing out errors in the remaining data sets. And so we need to see what these errors are. So again, over here now, I have that year. Now. So remember, it's year to date. I, this is what I added to it. And so I guess here it's, it's struggling with the year as being a conflict. Um, and so um, do a new tab. We need to fix that up. I think I did two calculated fields for a year. Just later on, I 
difficult up to here, I don't know. Uh, so, 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 edit. Okay. So it's come up here. All right, so it's got two years, right? So it's got the duplicate here. And so I no longer need the, one was brings, one's the calculation, right? And so here's the calculation. And so I could just remove that, delete that field. And then I do need to put it back in here, right? Okay, so here, now it's all sorted itself out. Cancel, save. And then when I refresh this manage, the rest of the error messages should be gone. All right. <clears throat> and then we'll just hit publish. Okay, here in the tab. Down publish. Yeah, now when I'm now I can run this report again. It's, it's republished. And so here I'm getting my results now. The values are looking better. But if I had a CO2 spend here and I'm calculating up year to date, it's missing where has it gone over here. And then here it appears again. Um, for example, if you go down here, there's a couple of things we've got to do a few details here. I need to fix this up. Um, so descending, it should only show me. So Susan. Um, flies 21 here, which would be here, 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 and then obviously here. Um, a few details. Again, sort descending. Um, Susan appears to have flown another flight. So, what's happening here is that here's an error in my logic where I did the year to date calculation. So, the year to date calculation, uh, I did it. Uh, essentially over here uh, in this object here. So calculate the year to date for the worker. But what happens if the worker doesn't fly in a particular month there? Yeah? And so that's why it's then missing. So the year to date calculation really ought to be done here. Right? And so that's, we just need to go correct that. And so essentially this is it um, over here. I'm gonna light, it, light this thing up again. Mm. Remove that year to date calculation from here. And then put it on when I have my supervisory organization do a year to date calculation uh, for that supervisory organization for the worker combination. So here, yeah, this, this, this is year to date for this. Yeah, per <laughs> flight line. That's the wrong place for a calculation. So here, this, um, I don't need any of that, right? Uh, so this year to date, CO2. This is wrong, so I can delete that field. Delete it. Do I use that year? I don't know if I use a year. Um, yeah, let me uh, save it. I'll pretty soon find out. Sure, well, now this has changed. Um, you should not have an issue over here, but the last two should light up now. So it's just looking for year to date value. But any other problem here? Yeah, because that's where the managed fields is. But I need to um, add the years of calculation here. So edit this. And 
segment. Yeah. So yeah, I have the yeah. So I do the functions, the window function, the sum. And what do I sum? The CO2 for the month. Partition by the org. Now again by worker. By the worker for the year. Order by the first day of the month. Ascending. And that should do. And then year to date C two. I name it exactly the same way as I have it here, which is a spectrum spell. In the managed fields area. Let's see. Anyway, it, 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 the, the name should end up like this. So, if there's your two. Okay, so that I added that the yes. Well, maybe it was consistent. <laughs> get a get away with it. Maybe not. And yeah, I got away with it. No, I did not. All right, I'm gonna have to edit this guy. SEO two years ago, that's what it was called. Okay. What was that? All right, so okay, what was that earlier on? And so this is the name it needs to have. So remove that and this because that oh did I CO2 yeah to date you can see it in the report the thing is the reports and I'm gonna be looking for that as well and so I can just see it here That's how CO2 YTD. And I need to pass it through, of course. Done. Save. View and publish. And hopefully. All right, so here we get at the, the report. And so let's run it. Yahoo! That looks more like it, doesn't it? Yeah. So here you have your budget from your prior year. Here you're seeing you're doing okay, and then over here you exceed it. Um, and now with the drill down here. If you do details, you can see who. All right, so that's James's flight, so descending, and Susan's flight, and James's flight. And then here, it goes way over. There must be another flight again. So yeah, James again, uh, another flight from James. Yeah. And so it wouldn't be bad to see the detail. A couple of things that need to be cleaned up here. Um, there's Spaces that that doesn't look great. Um, this drill down here doesn't really make sense. Some of the stuff. So let's just fix this report up a little, and then we can actually provide access. To see if you want to see what flights it is now, we lost the data during the data flow because we were summarizing it. 
And specifically to get the year-to-date and uh, budget values, we had to drop detail, and it would be good to get it back. You know? uh, obviously, it's not in this report anymore, but um, in other reports. So first of all, let's fix up the, the detail. The, when you drill down, you don't want to see the zeros. So that's the detail of the override. And you only want to see where the filter summarize is not zero. And the data you're going to see again is going to be what we all listed, right? So worker, um, uh, the soup org, the date, Uh, the CO2 year to date. Anyway, drilling down on that, yeah. So that makes no sense. And um, yeah, okay. And then this is the important piece, right? So now when I say okay here, and uh, I say okay there, when I click on here, your details now. All right, maybe I need to refresh to rerun it. I'll start the end date of the wrong way around. All right, so now perfect. Well, then you have that. Now I don't want all of that funny drill downs. The only one that really makes sense is just let's say you bring it for your org and, and select it below. So here the drill down would be specific fields and it would, the month would make the, uh, the it's a super would make sense. So that's all that. Okay, swap those dates around. Start and end date. Like I said, you would have changed this to uh, top level supervisor your organization managed by current worker, you know, um, and then, so that the person doesn't have to default their own org. Uh, it's always good to um, I'll say parameters. And now the other thing that we want to do now is to actually get the detail of those flights down. Um, and there's a nice new feature in Workday. Detail of the flights, however, are in this. Remember, this is the PDS that has the flight detail, right? And so we have uh, this DS yeah, has the every flight in CO2 value. <clears throat> so we need to publish it. Um, and then we need to do a drill back report over here. And so let's go, let's do that. Um, view, no, CO2. Mm, there's a lot of screens here. So go to catalog. And let's create a data set. This year to one point two. Yes, see two one two. No, I can use this one. Yes. And so yeah, we're gonna do the same. Stuff import of view the data set. What happened? Why is that me? What about paste it? I see. Great again. Uh, DSCO2 1.2. I believe that was it. Yes. Yeah. 
There we go. And yeah, let's go with this. Remember what we do is edit and put our managed fields on there. And then obviously this is so um, this is this is no, let's call it blank gate. That's so tricky, this one here. This UI is this blank date. This is super org. Supervisory organization. Add time extension is not necessary. Expense report line. That is obviously nice. That is the item. This is from. Travel origin address. These are just, we don't even need that anymore. Travel destination. And don't need to, do need work, I don't need the stamps and still need CO2. All right, done. Save. No, security, right? View the data set. And security. Edit. Done. Yeah, data source security. Once we are publish it, there was trended worker. All right, and super walk. Securing entity. That should set it up now. By the security, done, published, submit. And so now this is going to publish, and then we can write that drill to report on it that has the detail that we're looking to have a look at and we're looking to jump to. You know? This seems fast. There we go, I have our data set, and now I can create my customer report. This time it's gonna be advanced, travel lines, and and it's gonna be work, and it's gonna show the worker, definitely show the travel instance, um, the, Report line. <clears throat> I did this before, right? No. All right, so here we are <clears throat> and adding these lines. So a worker, um, the date makes sense, the problem too. Um, actually, the instance as well, the extension report lines, you can get into all sorts of data about it. And then, you know, the origin, destination, and the worker. Got that already, orange. Destination <clears throat> and the, the CO2 value of that flight. And then, obviously, you, you're filtering again by supervisory organization. All soup all and ten selection list value from another field and it's that prompt soup all and subordinates sub okay and of course on the dates all those dates. Um, right, flight date always greater than or equal to value from another field from start date and then flight date. Less than or equal to. 
value from the next field, and then from the index. Okay. Now we're kind of all set up with this and that and travel, or maybe the travel detail. Okay. So now if we go back to that original report and edit it and use this as a drill run, right? So that was the target we're trying to do. So for this, this one, uh, and now we're going to have a drill down. Yes, here uh, on this year to date value rate. Um, a drill to detail report link. And so here's the drill to report. This is travel detail. That would be the same. And I have these prompts. And these prompts can all be filled by start the prompts from the original drill down report. So that's uh, end date, end date, uh, supervised organization, and this is all. All right. <clears throat> so here we go, huh? We'll run this. And then we run our. Oh, and that was uh, operations, and then start that one oh one twenty seventeen. I believe it was twelve three one twenty seventeen twenty eighteen. <clears throat> that that was a twenty seventeen one. Right? Again, so here we are, right? Remember when we were here. Now when we click here, we have drill to report links. Yeah? And so here's your travel detail. Remember that's 11,000. And so then here you have the, 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 the individual flights, right? So let's jump to that report to show you the individual flights. Right? There we have it. <clears throat> Start to finish. Do Prism do good? Uh, a couple of things. I think it's very important to have a use case that um, you know that, that would make sense. Uh, uh, Prism is not just to designed to do anything, right? It's not not like a data warehouse. We're just sucking data and then maybe do something with it. So pick a use case, um, and then um, you can see how how it's possible to do that, right? Without, I mean, it's very the turnaround is very quick, right? But obviously, there's a lot more that needs to be discussed over here about what about the budget, whether the budget from five years there, and all that stuff. So obviously a lot of details, but I hope you got a good impression of use case uh, in Prism, how it works from ingesting the data, transforming data, publishing data, writing the reports on top of that, and to come up with a solution like that. So yeah, I hope you guys learned something. And enjoy Prism. <laughs>